The Culture Pop Podcast is brought to you by the law offices of Jacob and Ronnie. Accident or injury, call Jacob and Ronnie. Call Jacob. Hey, it's Mace. If you or a friend or loved one is injured in an accident, the first person you should call is my friend Jacob. When I did this, Jacob was great. He helped me by talking through the next steps, which really put my mind at ease. When you're injured in an accident, you got to have an expert. That's why you call Jacob, just like I did. Call Jacob, 844 24Jacob. That's 844 24Jacob. Or visit calljacob.com. Call Jacob. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Culture Pop Podcast. I'm Steve Mason. Look who it is. It is Sue Ballou, Sue Kalinske. I have missed you so much. I have missed you, too. And um, I didn't know this until I uh, got a text from a friend of mine today that uh, he listened to one of the last shows. And um, I thought that you were doing the shows by yourself. Oh, no, I had a guest host for a couple of them. Well, I didn't know that. Oh, so, um, so I, it kind of felt like, um, you know, I was cheating like, on you. Well, not, not so much cheating, but it's <laughs> it, I, like, at first I thought you were just doing a solo album. Yes. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah. And then it looked like you were doing a duet with somebody else. Yes. So, um, uh, Andy Kamenetsky filled in for a couple of shows while you were gone. And you know what else happened while you were gone? What? We have a brand new YouTube channel. That's uh, what I, I saw too. So everybody can go to YouTube, search Culture Pop Podcast, and there it is. You'll be able to see this show that we're doing right now, uh, see what the world-famous Sue Kalinske looks like, uh, <laughs> see see me as well. I think my hair is looking okay today, right? Yeah, I'm actually, I've got some gray coming in here, so oh, I've got a bon- right. I got a little bit of a Bonnie Raitt situation. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> I, used to, I used to do yoga with Bonnie Raitt. Really? Yeah, legit. When I lived in San Francisco back in 2002 or so, um, I was doing morning drive up there for six months, and uh, we would go to this yoga studio in Mill Valley, right across the Golden Gate Bridge. Beautiful mm-hmm. little town. There was Bonnie Raitt. She was in my class three days a week for as long as I lived in San She hardly ever missed a loyal and true yogi who I never had the guts to walk up to and say, I'm a huge fan. I was just going to ask you if you talked to her. No. Yeah, no, never did. Never did. Did any oh. did anybody? Did anybody talk to her? She she always came with uh with uh, two other people that were with her all the time and they would always go to coffee and then I would go to the same coffee shop but sit across the room and try to wonder how I could walk up to Bonnie Raid and say, "Hi, I just did yoga with you. Can we be friends?" <laughs> She had yoga handlers? Yes, yoga handlers. No, we've come up with this concept called turtling, which is interesting. Ramona Shelburne came up with this. And she got it. I'm sure she got it from somewhere else. Um, But that when you get into a public situation, a lot of people will turtle. They'll go into their little shell and they'll be afraid to talk to people. So I have, since this conversation took place with Momo, have decided I'm not going to turtle anymore. So like I went to a party last Saturday, a birthday party. It was in the afternoon. I'm like, you know, I had one of them Aperol uh, drinks. What do they call those? The Aperol, it's like a pin, uh, spritz, the Aperol spritz. Got one of those in my hand. I was like, you know, I'm going to be the life of the party. I went and talked to everybody, introduced myself. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be a turtle anymore. Well, I would never, I would never even think of you of being a turtle because you're a pretty social guy. I am fr- so, I'm pretty social, but I can also be very turtley. Wow. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm out of my shell now. Look the hell out. I'm out of my shell. Okay. Uh, by the way, I, sh- I should mention Anthony Ramos is coming up on the show today. I'm so excited. He's in the new Transformers movie, was in the Heights, uh, Broadway cast of Hamilton. I'm like super psyched about that. Um, so what's what do, what do you got? What's been going on? Um, just, you know, back, I, you know, was in, in, as you probably told people, I was in San Francisco for a month, Yes, came home for a day and a half, went down to Florida for my mother-in-law's 90th birthday. Nice. Uh, it was great. It was like the best medicine, great reprieve, went out on a boat, swam in the ocean, just, uh, just chilled with Tom's family. Nice. A lot of fun. A lot of drinking. Yeah. Um, a lot of eating. Yep. And uh reading and swimming it was great. And uh since I've been back I just uh back to uh you know everything I've been doing. I shot some of my documentary over the weekend. Nice. Uh th- did 3 days of that and um 
Zoom meetings, and uh, and here we are. And back to the Culture Pop podcast. Yes, yes. Which I it's missed. not the Culture Pop podcast without Steve Mason and Sue Kalinsky. No, oh. it requires Sue Kalinsky to be full strength. Yeah, well, I was really jonesing. I really, really missed it. I, I, I must have missed like I maybe three shows or four shows with you. Yeah, I think it was like four shows. Couple, wow. of, couple of good. Robert Wisdom was really good. Yeah. Uh, from uh, from Barry and from uh, The Wire. Uh, the other day, Fred Melamud, uh, who is a great character actor, he's also on Barry. Uh, he was on the show, and I actually did that one solo. But uh, they'll all start showing up on the YouTube channel, on Apple, on Spotify, all that, all that stuff. So you were going to bring one thing. One thing. So uh, I, I, obviously you're following the writer's strike. Yes. Which, okay. So one of the uh, bones of contention is AI writing. Yes. And my friend Nicole, who was my uh, former writing partner, told me that she read an AI script. Yeah. And I said, well, what was it like? And she said... It was passable. And uh, and so there's something a little scary in that. Of course. <laughs> that it was passable. Yep. But then we were joking about all the shows that are on television that are probably worse. Than <laughs> the worse, AI than, worse than AI? <laughs> <laughs> like, I wonder if you, if you, um, it would be kind of like a fun test. Yes. To, to have a bunch of people read, uh, an actual writer's script and an AI script and ask them which one was AI. Well, I'm telling you, Sue, I, have you been on chat GPT? I haven't, but I, I, one of the people that I um, run with, she's a teacher. She teaches at uh, Cal state long beach Yeah, and she has two young children and her kids do the chat GPT. Um, it, it, it helps one of her kids who has some issues um, in school, he's, I wouldn't say that he's, that he has a, a disability, but right. it, it helps him gather information if he has to write an essay. Okay. So, but I haven't been on it. Have you? Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I love the chat GT, GPT. Um, and, and, and what do you love about it? Um, I love, well, uh, first of all, I love the, the science and the technology of it all, right? I mean, it's, it's fascinating concept that there is this artificial intelligence that is available to, to everybody. Um, and it is open source. So, so like you could go do it if you wanted to, but let's say your, your friend, um, let, let's just say pick a, so like your friend has the son or daughter has to write a term paper, pick a subject. Um, about the moon. Okay. Right. A term paper about the moon. Okay. The moon is the Earth's only natural satellite and has fascinated human beings for centuries. Its influence on our planet's tides, its unique features, and its mysterious... Uh, it's writing too fast for me. And its mysterious aura make it one of the most studied celestial objects in the night sky. In this term paper, we will delve into the history, composition, and various aspects of the moon. History. Then composition, then and it and it just goes on. It wrote an actual term paper while we were talking. Right. So is 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 the idea that a student would read this and then basically lift it and a use it themselves? A student could certainly lift this if they wanted to. Now I have heard the teachers have a way of figuring out if it's Chat GPT or not, but the reality is, I can. It can do radio promos. It could do an introduction for Anthony Ramos, which I'm about to do in a minute. It could write the introduction. We do game of games every day. It can write a multiple choice game uh, for me to use, which I have used on the air. Um, it, look, the writers have every reason to be concerned about ChatGPT. In fact, BuzzFeed, uh, the, the publication, I guess, website, has laid off all of its writers, and now all the stories are being written by AI. Yeah, I mean, you know, they were saying actually in this in this article that I read that was in the New York Times, they were saying that formulaic shows like Law and Order, sure, you know, shows like that would be an easy target, and that's probably going to be the first type of show that they would venture into doing it. Um, but shows like Twin Peaks or um, Peaky Blinders or Fleabag, shows that have a lot more creativity. Highly original. 
Exactly. That would be a very difficult thing to write. Because I think I could write a law and order script. I think almost all of us can write a yeah. law and order. I mean, I, I know right away there's a, there's a Tai Chi class and it's in a park and then somebody's, oh my God, it's a dead body. And then the right. next thing you know, there's Mariska Hargate and Ice-T, <laughs> they're, they're studying the body that was discovered by the Tai Chi students. Like, right, isn't this like basic Law and Order 101? To a certain extent, yes. To a certain extent. But like- It doesn't have to be Tai Chi. Could be a dance class. Could be, I mean, so, somebody's going to discover that body. But somebody had a, uh, uh, there was a, uh, a picket sign that somebody had like, you know, AI- doesn't have um what was it it was something about how they how they don't have like a like a warped childhood or you know it's yeah like, true they don't they don't have that reference that they can um you know that they that resource if they're writing characters that have a lot more depth yes you know so. and i and i think too we talked about law and order or csi or ncis it, they're much more formulaic but when you're talking about original stuff you're right that doesn't come from human experience. That doesn't come from the angst that goes along with drama and trauma and comment, all that stuff. So I think it's harder for chat GPT to do that, but it's pretty smart. It's yeah. Pretty smart. Yeah. I mean, you know, I remember years ago when uh, I, I, I'm trying to think it was when I was I was writing with Nicole and we went in uh, for a friend's uh, interview to see, you know, to write on friends. And this was more ageism than anything else. But we were over 30 and they didn't want to hire us. But, you know, I, there have been many times and, and not only in scripted, but even in reality, yeah. where if if you're a producer and you want to work on a crime driven series and you don't have that experience on your resume. Right. They don't want you. Sure. And it's like, I'm a producer. <laughs> I'm yeah. a storyteller. You could put me in any category yeah. and I will be able to, to cultivate, um, you know, an, an episode. Yeah, I will right. be able, I have the tools because of what I do for a living. Yes. So this even is like, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I'm not in scripted TV at this moment. Right. And I haven't been for a long time, but it's something that I would be very upset about. Uh, Chat GPT, by the way, is writing a, a treatment for a project right now for me. It's doing it while we, <laughs> while we even speak. Um, all right. Our guest today originated the dual role of John Lorenz and Philip Hamilton in the landmark Broadway musical Hamilton. He went on to star in the film version of Lin Manuel Miranda's In the Heights. He is now starring in Transformers Rise of the Beasts, opening everywhere on June the 9th. Anthony Ramos joins us. Anthony, thank you so much for doing this, man. We really appreciate it. Oh, of course. Of course. Thank you for having me. So I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan. First of all, In the Heights is like one of my favorite Broadway musicals. So I was so excited to see it uh, come to the come to the big screen and a big Lin-Man Miranda fan. Uh, Tell me about and we'll get to Transformers and all the great stuff you've got coming up. Uh, But tell me about working on Hamilton off Broadway and coming to Broadway. When did you know that it was more than just uh, your your average musical? I mean, it, it was a sensation. Yeah, no, I mean, I knew it was special when I heard the music for the first time. You know, when I heard the music, I was like, oh, this is different. You know, I'm, you know, we didn't have, there was no cast album yet or anything like that. When I, when I joined the, the group, it was, um, they were just recordings of, of like old recordings of people singing the songs, you know, like from a phone, like, you know, wow. on somebody's computer. Like, so, I mean, I connected, I connected to the music just off of listening to those. I mean, I was listening to that, 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 those tracks were like, that's all I was listening to that summer as a fan. So it was, it was, it was crazy to, to be, to be, you know, asked to do the show and, and be a part of that group and, and know that like, damn, I really get to, I really get to be a part of this thing. This shit feels crazy. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen with it, but I know that this is the most, this is the most special thing that I've been, been been a part of up until this point in my life. You know, at, at that time when when uh, when I was when I joined the cast. Yeah, his style of writing is just so brilliant. And as you know, 
how much fun was it to just sing those songs? Yeah, it was fun. It was, it was, it was a great time. You know, like you, you hope, like you hope that you get a chance to do that at least once in your career. You know, some people only get to do it, do that once. Um, and you know, and then the, the odd, and then the odds of you being a part of something that becomes like a, a cultural phenomenon, not only changes the game and a genre of performing arts, like, you know, it literally changed the game in musical theater, but it felt like it changed, uh, you know, it, 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 the album went double platinum or something like the shit did numbers like a pop song, like a pop album or something, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yep. And that that had never happened before, you know, not 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 with a, uh, a musical theater album. So it was, you know, it was special to be amongst the group who did this, you know, amongst the group who did this for the first time ever in, yeah. in history. So that shit, that shit was monumental in uh, in my life. So I remember, and this was before the pandemic. I think it was 2020 at the Oscars. Lin Manuel Miranda. Uh, announced to the world, this uh, this kid Anthony Ramos is going to be a star. Did, do I have that right? Did that happen? <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. So he, what uh, was that? What was that like for you? It was cool. It was because I was going on stage right after him, <laughs> and uh, I actually didn't hear him say it because I was backstage doing some shit or doing something back there. I, I can't remember what I was doing, but he he, he said, it. and um, it was a special moment. It was a special moment. Uh, where, you know, everybody was like, yo, Lin, did you hear what Lynn just said about you? You know, my, you know, people people were texting me like, yo, he was on TV. He said you're going to be a star, man. You know, it was cool. It was like, it was a really cool moment. You know, it's like this, this you know, my man who I've worked with for a long time, you know, he gives you a shout out like that at the Oscars. And then Utkarsh, you know, uh, also in, in a rap that he did, I think he was promoting Mulan at the time at the, at the Oscars as well. Yeah. Shout, shouted out both me and Lynn, you know, uh, it was just really cool. Just felt like a, a, a night of homies shouting each other out. So I just watched in the Heights again. I saw it when it first came out. I never got to see the, the uh, Broadway show, unfortunately. Um, and, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's actually one of my favorite, favorite musicals. It was just so great. The story's great. The music is unbelievable. Um, it made me want to, uh, take dance lessons. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Did you take dance lessons? <laughs> no, I didn't, but it's on my list. <laughs> <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> it's just so contagious, but how, what, what did it feel like, um, doing the role that was originated by Lynn Manuel and then having him direct you in, in, in the role that he originated. What, what did that feel like? It was, you know, it was special. It was cool because, um, you know, he trusted me. Uh, well, you know, he, he didn't, he, he was on, he was producing the movie. He was on set a lot, but John Chu, John Chu was directing and, and it was really cool to see how him and John collaborated and, um, you know, and, and how, you know, learning from them and the way they exchanged ideas. And, um, but also, you know, people ask me, they're like, yo, what did Lynn say to you? What did he say to you, you know, before you played the character? And I was like, nothing. He was just like, yo, like, have a good time. You know, like, it's like my interpretation of the character was going to be different than his. You know, I, I there's no study I could do on how he played the role. Like it's, it's not what just wasn't going to be the same. I was going to do something different because I'm just, I'm a different actor and I'm going to make different choices and the project connects to me in a different way, you know? So, um, as does every other project that, right. Like, you know, somebody could come play, uh, you know, we've had what four Spider-Mans, all of them are different. Yes. You know, so, right. you, uh, and it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, getting to create this character that I've loved for so many years, but never been able to see on the big screen, um, cr make, you know, create this guy for the first time for the big screen and, and, um, and make him my own, you know, and really, you know, almost, almost create something new out of something that already existed. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you went on at that point to do star is born with, uh, Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. And like when you work with, Lady Gaga, I'm I'm fascinated. Do you call her Gaga? Do you call her? I I guess her actual name is. Do you say, "Hey Gaga"? 
<laughs> no, no, I call it Stephanie. I actually did Stars Born before in the Heights. Oh, you did? But okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, that Stars Born was my first like big movie, my first studio movie. I did like four auditions for that movie. I remember like Bradley, yo, Bradley was really uh he was tough, man. Uh he he wasn't just gonna give that role out, uh that role away, you know, and, and um it was it was really cool. That was my first you know, that year I did four films that year. It was crazy. That was in 2017. I'll never forget it. It was, I did, I did, uh, I did a Star is Born. Then I went and did uh, Monsters and Men, which is a movie I did at, that made it to Sundance and uh, went to the theaters with John David Washington and Kelvin Harrison Jr. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, uh, and Ronaldo Marcus Green directed, who, he did the movie about the, the Williams sisters. And now, I, you know, I think he's doing Marley, directed that by Bob Marley. Yeah. And then uh and then I went on to do Godzilla. I was a glorified extra in that, uh, for sure. And I had like <laughs> two lines in that movie. You blink and you miss me. But uh but then uh and then I did a, another movie called Summer Days, Summer Nights with Ed Burns. That was fun too. You know, so it was that was a that was a really fun year. You know, uh I was really, really starting to, you know, do movies and get my get my feet wet in the in, in films and and uh, I had a lot of a lot of awesome experiences that year, shooting with different directors and shooting in different locations and um, shooting a small the smallest movie to the biggest movie, you know, three hundred million dollars to like a two million dollar movie, you know. Hmm. So it was it was kind of that was a whirlwind of a year for sure. So when but you Brad, say that, but I call but I call her Stephanie. I didn't call her Gaga on set. I did call her Stephanie. Call her Stephanie. Okay. Right, right everyone out of right out of Stephanie. the gate. Right out of the gate, you called her Stephanie. Every, everyone called her Stephanie. Nobody called her Gaga. She in, she introduced herself as Stephanie. Um, so um, it it was actually weird if for any of us to call, hey Gaga like she, you know, she was like yo I'm Stephanie and oh yo what's up what up Stephanie was good you know yeah yeah oh that's so, cool. So, Steve, I just wanted to ask one question because, yeah. Anthony, you said that you did four auditions for uh, for Bradley. Um, now, did you do something a little different each time? Was he giving you notes each time? Oh, yeah. No, he was super specific with his notes. Yeah, like, yeah, play it this way. Oh, can he play more that way? Can he play more, you know, uh, you know, um, can he uh, just a little more, you know, a little more calm or a little bit like you, he's super specific. And like the first two auditions I did, I didn't hear for months. Hmm. Then all of a sudden I was like in Arizona singing, uh, doing a gig. It was like, a uh, am over here doing a singing gig in Arizona. And I had a show the next day I get, I get basically they're like, yo, Bradley wants you to put yourself on tape. So I'm like, all right, cool. I put myself on tape. They're like, okay, Bradley wants another tape. I'm like, okay, great. He wants it a different, a, in a different way. Great. I do that tape. They're like, okay, now Bradley wants you to fly to LA and read with the cast. Mm. I was like, yo, I can't fly to LA tomorrow because I have to sing in Arizona. And they're like, yo, look, if you really want this part, Bradley needs you to take your ass to LA, fly over there, read with the cast. And you're gonna have to fly back to Arizona and hope that you make it in time for your gig. And I was like, "Yo, I cannot miss this gig. These people can sue me. I mean, I don't know what they're gonna sue me for. Right? <laughs> I ain't got nothing to give them. But I was like, you know, I don't want to get sued. But I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take the chance. So I flew to LA that morning. Um, I got, I get to the reading. I'm with the entire team. It was Stephanie, it was Sam Elliott, Bradley. Everybody's there. I'm th all the producers. I'm super nervous. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. I'm reading with the cast. And everyone's like, we're so excited to do this together after after reading. And I'm like, do these people know I'm just, this is just an audition for me? Like, do they understand? <laughs> I'm not like in the cast yet. Like, they didn't give me the part. And they're like, yeah, we can't wait. We'll be in touch. I'm like, be in touch about what? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know if I got the part. So I'm like, I leave and I'm like, okay, but well, that was wild. And I leave, I go to, I'm in the airport and I get the call. Yo, you got the role. Super excited! I fly back to Arizona and I sing that night, and uh, everything everything was great. But yeah, it was it was a, it was a whirlwind, man. It was it was. Uh, but Bradley, yeah, definitely he he was not. It wasn't um, it wasn't easy. Like he really, you know, I had to work for that role, and I'm happy. That that's the kind of director he is, though. You know, he he's he's locked in. He's, yeah, you know, you he's he's one of the best that I've ever worked with. Honestly, he's unbelievable. So you use the word 
whirlwind and you are starring in a tentpole blockbuster soon to be worldwide phenomenon uh transformers <laughs> rise of the beasts that's going to be a whirlwind now yeah. you were a little kid when the original transformers movie came out i think right yeah i think the when when the first one come out 2000 i can't remember 2012 2013 something like that no i mean i was how old was i 2013 i guess i was no nah, i was i was in my 20s i'm 31 now oh okay so, you know so, yeah. so were you a fa- were you a fan of the movies did you ever pl- and when you were little did you play with the actual transformer toys oh 100 percent. like the beast wars was my favorite so when i found out that the, when i read the script and i found out that beast wars was the Beast Wars were going to be in this film. I was going crazy. I was like, yo, this is insane. Like, I've been a fan of Beast Wars for forever. You know, like, I, I would wait every weekend for this cartoon. I'd wait, like, I'd be, like, faithfully waiting for the next episode. And I, I can't remember if it was 30 minutes or an hour. Um, you know, but you just, like, you're there, you're waiting, you see the show. You know, and that was the only, sh- I mean, the visual effects were amazing to me. Yeah, you know, back then, like back when I was watching it, you know, that was like the late nineties, early two thousands. So I'm hyped watching Beast Wars. Like this shit is crazy. Like <laughs> look at them transform. Look at Cheetor. You know. So now, fast forward twenty, almost over twenty years later, you're watching it and you're like, yo, this is insane to watch these characters that I love in you know evolve and watching them on the big screen for the first time is is uh is a whole is a different is another level for me you know cheeto was my favorite cheeto was always the coolest and cheeto always had like the funny lines and you know he was always had swag and he was you know he was just cool you know and and um to see these characters like rhinox and air razor and primal you know ron perlman playing the character again you know that is legendary for me as wow, this has got to be dream come true. You you were all over this thing. Oh, 100%. 100%. So, yeah. so you're used to working with, I mean, you've you've been in great ensemble casts. Uh, in this case, are you acting opposite pretend giant transformers or how, you're on a green screen? How does all that work and how do you act towards that? No, you're, you're there's nothing. I mean, there's nobody. There's just you. There's a, you know, you do a rehearsal, somebody comes in with a tennis ball. So it's a big long, it's a, the stick with the tennis ball at the top. And they're like, you know, the tennis ball is the transformer's head or eyes. All right. You look up wow. at it. You do a couple of rehearsals. You're doing a whole scene. But Optimus, but I don't know, but B, but we can't go there. Whatever. You're looking and you, everybody's eye line is different, right? B is here. Optimus is here. Then like RC, you know, this one's a little taller than that one. you so then they bring in the tennis ball so you can see how tall each one is, how the height of each one. And then first AD is like Cliff Landing, who was uh, doing the ADR movie. Shout out to Cliff. He's one of my favorite people in the universe. Cliff goes, you know, Anthony, uh, you know, you, you remember where, where Ultimus is? You remember where Bumblebee? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I remember where they at. Okay, great. Takes the tennis balls out. And now you're doing the scene to nothing. You're staring at no one looking at nothing, you ain't talking to anybody, and you just hope that you're looking in the right direction. And um, uh, and if you're not, the director probably yell, yo, look left. Oh, okay, great. He said, you know, but, <laughs> that, and, and you just make it all up in your mind. You, you make, you know, you, you just, you read the scenes, you got readers who are standing off, off to the side, but like way off to the side, um, depending, right? If it's a wide shot, they got to stand further away. So they need to do the lines on mics. If it's a close up, then they can be a little closer. They don't have to necessarily do it on a mic. They can be a little closer to you, which helps you and feels a little more intimate, right? Because the camera's super tight on your face, or um, you know. So it's it's um it's fun, man. I love it. Like people ask me, is it weird acting with no one? And I'm like, nah, I love it because you just get to make it all up. You just it just it's all in your imagination. It just comes from your head. <laughs> just like. And you're just like, whatever happens, happens. You know, there's no, I'm not reacting to anyone. And then um, it makes the scenes with Dominique, you know, and Toby, you know, the human characters that much more fun because you're like, it's almost like, oh, cool. Yeah, this is what it feels like again. Oh, cool. There's somebody else in this movie. Right, 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 right. 
So, right. so, so you are being, so you are being prompted. Like you said, you have readers. So someone is prompting you to do your lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's, there's some, there, there are readers there to, to read the Transformers lines and, uh, but they're not the, they're, they're not the person who's going to do it in the film. Right. So that's a whole other element that you get later on. I mean, I still don't even know what that sounds like. I mean, I, from clips I've seen of Pete do it, that's all I got. I haven't seen the movie. I'm waiting for the premiere, but it's, you know, you, you really, you don't, you know, I'm, I'm, because I'm, I was like, yo, I have the first time I watch this needs to be in the theater. I'm not there. I refuse to watch this in an editing room or on a TV. Like that's not just not going to happen. And you, 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 it's crazy. You just like, all right, cool. And they, 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 they send the scene, like they, they cut the movie together and they cut the scenes together. And then whoever they give the part to will do the lines of the transformer to that scene. And then they create the visual effects at the same time in tandem with the actor doing the lines and develop the hand movements and the things like that in tandem with the character's voice recordings. And it's, 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 uh, it's almost like they're making three movies wow. in one. So you virtually, you did, you did a movie with Pete Davidson, but, but you never did the movie with him, actually. No, no. This is actually my second movie with Pete. Mm-hmm. And we met, we met. Uh, I, I did a I, I did a movie called Dumb Money that comes out later on. I think it comes out in September, but um, with like Pete and Paul Dano and Seth Rogen, a bunch of those guys, comes out later this year. Um, but uh, but me and Pete had, had we hadn't met at all, hmm. and Pete's like, "Yo, I worked with this guy twice, and I haven't met him." <laughs> and it was like hilarious. Was, so I went and visited Pete on 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 uh, on the set of something he was shooting in New York, and finally we met and exchanged numbers and shit. It was cool. Pete's super. He's such a cool cool dude. So you mentioned uh, earlier with uh, Star is Born and the singing gig that you were doing, you also have a have a great music career and you've got music uh, coming out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my first uh, my first track. It was funny, like, I've you know, I put out two pop albums and I was like, you know, I want to go, you know, I kind of want to, I've been writing in LA for four years every, you know, fall and winter. I kind of split my careers. I'd be like, yo, I'm going to do music at the beginning of the year and I'll do acting at the end of the year. And, um, you know, uh, in 2021, I kind of changed, switched it up. And I was like, yo, I think I'm going to go to Miami. I'm going to work with, you know, I want to work with the Latinos down there. I want to work with the Latin writers. I want to write, you know, it's kind of dope because I can write a song in English. I can write a song in Spanish if I want. I can write a song in Spanglish, whatever. It's a different vibe. So I was like, yo, let me just head down there and let me feel that that energy. So I went down there. And, um, and, uh, yeah, I, I started working down there and I loved it and I just moved, I moved down there and I, you know, I'm there full time and, uh, you know, and, and, and yeah, I started uh, talking about, you know, some stuff I was going through and, 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 uh, and I got this first song called Villano, the villain. And, uh, it was, it's just kind of like this song about, you know, when, when you, 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 you're in a relationship, you leave it, you get, you, you know, you feel like you're the bad guy cause you, you, you made a decision to bounce and, uh, and, and, uh, and it gets painted in a different way than it was. And you get, you know, you, you get painted in the light that, uh, you get, you get, you get, you know, you, they, people look at you like this bad guy. And, uh, you know, it was almost like this song about, you know, it's just like, yo soy el villano, you know, keep going with the story that I'm the bad one. I don't care if people look at me weird or talk crazy about me. Like, cause, cause the role of the hero was too expensive anyway. It's almost like wearing that, you know, like, you know, wearing, wearing that, the black hat. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I said, I kind of want to write this villain song, you know, and then I, I kind of want to work on this project of what it's like going from that initial feeling to feeling like that to then going out and, you you go on, you know, you're like, all right, I'm single, you know, I'm, you know, going through the wave, the wave of emotions you could go through after going through a situation like that to now where, how I feel now where, you know, thank God. I mean, I've been, you know, my life is probably the best it's ever been. And, um, you know, not, not for lack of, of hardship, but, um, but, um, you know, the, you know, coming through those hard times and really, uh, you know, really almost like it's it's kind of interesting how the sun is peeking out. It's raining over here, but the sun's peeking out. All you can't mm. see is blood. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, like just this kind of vibe of life, right? You see the rain is still happening, but then the sun pokes out and, and you're able to tell a story after. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, totally. That's what this, you know, that's what this record feels like. 
Um, yeah, you know, sounds I, I got to talk about the, the rough times before I start talking about the, the sunny times. Yeah, yeah. It sounds very liberating. Yeah, for sure. You know, I, uh, I did stand up comedy for a long time, and it's not unlike stand up in that way where you go out on stage and you, you know, you're in a shitty time in your life, whether it's a <laughs> breakup or whatever. And I, I was on stage one night, I was like right after I broke up with a guy, and someone, some guy came over to me, uh, uh, in, in the lobby of the club and said, was that all real? <laughs> and I said, absolutely. It, this yeah. happened like moments before I got on stage. That is crazy. Yo, yeah, it's insane, man. Like you just get some of the best shit when you're going through the worst time, mm -hmm. you know, like, and if we can really just like, that's the way I love about music, especially, you know, and movies. I mean, just what we get to do is amazing because you can really pull if you can get through it. I mean, you got to get through it first, but if you can really get through it and you can dig, you can find so much, so much like there's so much shit I laugh at now that was so dramatic so crazy to me in the moment yeah <laughs> that now i crack jokes about and people like yo, i can't believe you're cracking a joke about that but it's like yo this shit is actually it's funny to me now like it's hilarious to me now but it's you know things people probably said about me just shit that was hurtful in the moment that i read back now I'm, you know you're laughing about it you know what they say like, tragedy plus time equals comedy yeah yeah i love that yeah yeah so last thing for you here, you're part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe now with uh, with Ironheart on Disney Plus uh, later, I guess next year, later this year. I'm a huge Marvel guy. I don't know the Ironheart character. I know she's played by Dominique Thorne and I know you're 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 with her there. What's her superpower thing? What is what is the Ironheart thing? I mean, I, you know, Iron Man's dead, so we need a new one. Yeah. You know, so so Ironheart is uh, she's essentially you know, she's our Iron Man, you know, that's, she's our new, um, our, our new Avenger. You so know, she's, she's got the suit. Leader. She's got the suit. She's got the suit. She's built it. She's built her own suit. You know, she's, she's almost, she's learned, you know, she's learned from Tony Stark. You know, uh, her dad was working for Tony Stark. She'd steal parts and create her own suit. Um, you know, and, and, uh, you know, she basically, she got that blessing from him. You know, uh, like, you know, I see, he's like, I see you, you know, yeah, no, you got it. She's genius. She's a genius. And, um, you know, she's from Chicago and, you know, our show was set in Chicago and, and you can really, um, you know, it was, it was fun, man. It was really a lot of fun developing. Yeah. I play the villain. I play the hood. Nice. Parker Robbins, you know, so Parker, we haven't, we haven't, uh, seen Parker Robbins in, in the Marvel universe yet. But Parker is a really cool character. You know, he he goes and he holds his breath and goes invisible. So we see moments in in the show where Parker is really working on his breath work. You know, he really he does things to work on his breath. The longer he holds his breath, the longer he can be invisible. Right. He right. levitates, he shoots magic bullets like Parker is such a dynamic character. Um, and you see he gets this hood. Uh, you know, the way he gets this hood is. Uh, is is uh in in this way it's 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 crazy it's it's kind of, it's, it's it's wild the way he gets this hood i don't want to give that away but yeah but but you see it changes his life you know he goes from an ordinary uh you know he goes he goes from an ordinary guy uh you know to to uh becoming this large you know he becomes this this more uh this this being that he never thought he'd be yeah very cool very cool well listen uh Transformers, uh, June the 9th. Really excited about that. Congratulations. New music in June. Uh, Marvel down the line. I know you're working on uh, the Twister sequel. I mean, you got everything. Can you feel that you're on like this rocket ride right now? Yeah, I feel like I'm on a rocket that hasn't launched yet. <laughs> like, like that's, you know, I, I mean, it, it, it maybe, you know, it, it just feels, you know, it's just a bunch of stuff that hasn't come out yet. And, um, but, but at the same time, I'm just having a good time. You know, what I'm, what I'm most excited about is, is just that I'm doing stuff that I really enjoy, you know, yeah. that I'm not going to work and feeling like, oh, uh, damn, like I got to go to work today. Like I'm like genuinely, you know, I'm grateful that I'm excited about all this stuff. I'm excited about going to work. I'm excited about the Marvel series. I'm excited about this movie, Twisters. This cast is amazing. Daisy Edgar Jones is incredible. Mm -hmm. Glenn Powell's amazing. Yeah. Like, you know, Lee, Lee Isaac Chung is a visionary. The way he's shooting this film, 
uh, my first day was a couple of days ago and um, already I'm working with him and I'm learning from him. And I'm just like, yo, this is cool. This is such a, an amazing, he's showing us previews of what the tornado sequences are going to look like. And, cool. uh, you know, so, so yeah, you know, I'm, I'm super excited, man. All uh, right. Yeah. I'm really excited. Well, listen, we very appreciate cool. you uh, coming on very much. Transformers Rise of the Beast is June the 9th and, uh, Anthony Ramos. Great meeting you. Uh, congratulations on everything, man. We'll talk to you down the line. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Anthony. All right. There he is, Anthony Ramos. Uh, really nice. Is it nice kid? I guess I'm, I at the age where I say he's a really nice kid. Well, you're like an old man. Yeah, I mean, I am 58, so I guess that does make him a kid. Uh, he's got so much. I mean, I don't think he realizes uh, what's going to happen when Transformers comes out. I mean, that is going to do $250, $300 million worldwide. He is going to become a gigantic and and even more recognizable star. Right. But well, look what he's done so far. Look at, you know, you just look at Hamilton alone. Yeah. You know, and all the attention he got from that. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, there you have your Culture Pop podcast. Uh, we, we loved having Anthony on. Don't forget, you can follow us now on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts. You can link to those at stevemason.com and check out our brand new YouTube channel. It is Culture Pop Podcast on YouTube. You can see, in fact, this very show, you may be watching it already, uh, this very show on YouTube with with pictures and everything. Um, Sue, thank you very much. And we will see everybody next time on the Culture Pop Podcast. Podcast.